What a day in Sixers world. Another center signed to the roster. Meanwhile, James Harden and the team could not be further apart on a makeup. And Joel B trolling the fans on a potential trade request. Or was he? We will break it all down here on Philly Take with RB. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome into the show. Like always, hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell down below. That way you don't miss any of the coverage. Today we are back, and man, does the news smack you in the face all at once. When it rains, it pours. We have a lot to get into today, man. It's been quiet, but here we are with a lot of substance. And uh, Sixer fans, once again, it's a common occurrence are just spiraling. They're losing their minds, and we need to break all of it down and talk about what it means. As I say here in pretty much every show, let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think is going to happen with this Sixers team? There's a lot of drama going on right now, but uh, it's hard to see what the clear solution is. So give me your thoughts down below. And before we dive right into it, shout out to our partner of today's video, Mint Mobile. Shout out to the partner of today's video, Mint Mobile. If you out there are similar to everyone else in the world who has thought to themselves at one point, why is my wireless bill so high? Then Mint Mobile is for you. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 per month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep costs low because they sell directly to you online, cutting out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? You can go and use that money to treat yourself to a Sixers game or even buy a new jersey. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. They even offer super affordable fans family plans with as little as two lines and switching to mint is super easy thanks to their digital e-sim cards you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home and if your phone isn't e-sim compatible mint will actually ship you a new sim card free of charge the whole process will only take about 15 minutes and if you get stuck mint has a great customer service team to help you through it so if you are interested in reliable coverage and fast data for a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com slash Philly Take. You can go right down to the description of this video and click the link, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. All right, man, let's jump right into it. So the big news of the day, the Sixers come to agreement with a couple players here. Philip Petrusev signing a standard NBA contract with the Sixers. Meanwhile, Azulis Tubelis inking a two-way deal with the Philadelphia 76ers, Petrusev was a draft and stash the past two seasons. Under the new CBA, you are allowed to have three two-way contracts now. So Tubelis will be the last two-way contract along with Terquavion Smith and Ricky Council IV. That means that those guys can either bounce you know, between the NBA or the Delaware Bluecoats this season. But Petrusev signing to the roster. He's going to be on the roster. Philip Petrusev. And what's even funnier about this, shout out to uh, John Hollinger here on Twitter. He says the Sixers now have five centers and seemingly a full roster given the tax hit of carrying a 15th player. Interested to see how this plays out. You know what this means right here? You know what this screams? They might do the same thing as last year. They might leave an open roster spot to then be fulfilled later. And remember what they did last year. They cut Isaiah Joe and Charles Bassey and they ended up signing Dwayne Dedman all because of tax implications. Who knows what they're going to do? I would like to see Terquavion get that roster spot. It seems to me that Tabellis and Ricky Council will probably be in the G League, but if Turk can get that roster spot, I'd be happy. But the Sixers will probably still have the mid-level exception to use, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, what do you think? Because I, it's hard for me to sit here on, on July 17th and believe that the Sixers are going to have five uh, centers on their roster. Here's more on this contract. Shout out to uh, Noah Levick here on NBC. He put out an article, and in this article, he says that the Sixers signed the Gonzaga product. Petrusev's deal is for two years, and he has a 50% guarantee in year one. So 50% guarantee in year one. It's a two-year contract. Then he talks about his stats. To be quite honest, just my quick summation here on Petrusev. I liked him, you know, a couple years ago. I thought he was really good in the summer league, and you know, nice defensive presence, nice rebounder, another big man. But watching this summer league, he did not jump off the screen to me. He did not show me a guy who I think is capable of being an NBA ready player. Maybe he'll be a back of the rotation or a back of the bench type of guy. 
I just, you know, I don't understand why they did this. And, you know, I, I understand it's been three years since you drafted them. You probably want them to come over by now, but you know, it almost feels like they're forcing it a little bit. And I go back to the mat, the, the mystery draft board on draft night. When we were live streaming, I predicted it, right? That draft board is the exact layout of the Sixers offseason plan. The three names that were in red, Harden, Paul Reed, and Petrushev on the depth chart, those were all maybes. Harden, still a maybe. Paul Reed ended up coming back after the Sixers matched the offer, and Petrushev comes over. The Sixers have five centers on their roster. Give me your thoughts on that. Again, I hope that this is part of a trade. I hope Daryl Morey has something up his sleeve. We'll get to him in just a bit, but uh, five big men on the roster right now. Absolutely insane to me. I mean... You look at how close the Sixers team was, and they've added Pat Bev in center. So we will see how that plays out. The next thing on the list, though, is James Harden. And this clip actually just came out a couple minutes ago here. Uh, We've had a huge update on James Harden today as well. I know it's day 4,567 of the James Harden reports. Here's Shams Charania on TV says that the relationship between James Harden and Daryl Morey is essentially severed. It is essentially fractured throughout this process. I went and watched this whole clip. Essentially, he just confirmed everything I've been saying the last couple weeks here. You know, James Harden and Daryl Morey are not seeing eye to eye. James Harden and Daryl Morey have a fractured relationship. And he even said, you know, James Harden wants to trade to the Clippers. And we've seen how he is before when he's been disgruntled. What did I say? Harden's not happy. He's not coming. He is not showing up. The thing that I see happening, though, is that Daryl Morey is not going to give in. He's not going to budge. So too bad, James. You're going to have to wait. It doesn't seem like James Harden at this point is coming back, but Daryl Morey will not settle for a star or maybe a ton of draft assets, whatever it is. So Harden, you're going to have to wait because, you know, he might not send you to the Clippers. I don't think the Clippers have anything that the Sixers want that they're willing to give up. So like I said a couple days ago, man, this is going to get very sticky. It's going to be a a long, drawn-out process. It's going to get ugly before it gets pretty. So we'll see how that works out. But I do want to go to a quick update from Kyle Newbeck, who put out an article summing up everything that happened today. We'll get to to the Embiid stuff in a second here. But just real quick, here's what Newbeck had to say about the Harden situation. He says that Harden continues to push for a trade out of town. Teammates have tried to give Harden a lifeline by reinforcing their desire to play with him next season, though those efforts do not seem to have changed the problem at hand. So similar to Simmons, you know, he doesn't care. He's not listening to that. Uh, Harden and his representation may not hold ill will toward the teammates, but there's a rift between him and them and management. And there is a growing expectation that rift could lead to an even uglier battle. I'm telling you, this thing is going to draw out probably into training camp. Like they need to resolve this, man, because it is getting ugly already. Philly's position on a Harden trade has been described as unreasonable by competing executives. While the team is pushed back on that notion, they view their path to a hardened trade to accomplish one of two things. One, they want to get back a package that allows them to stay in the same tier of contention, or they want to make a trade that returns enough assets to flip for an, another high-level player. So again, Daryl Morey has always star-hunted. That's what he is trying to do. If it was up to me, I might consider a package with a lot of draft assets given, again, the cap situation in 2024, everything else we've been talking about. But Daryl Morey is content on getting another high-level star, maybe a wing. Nick Nurse came here to win. They want to win. And they're not just going to give in to James Harden. So uh, the rest, he just kind of goes on and talks about, you know, how this all came about. And the Sixers won an all-star level player in return. But it's hard when Harden continues to get hurt. The Sixers did not get past the second round. And James looked bad in game six and seven. So we're in the same spot. We're in the same spot. But it is pretty much confirmed at this point, as of right now, that unless, you know, barring an unexpected change of mind or change of heart, James Harden is not coming back. So that's where it stands. So give me your thoughts on that down below in the comment section. Now, the last and biggest thing of the day here, Joel and B uh, absolutely sent head spinning this morning. Everybody woke up to a nice video and Joel and B was doing an interview with Maverick Carter this was on some platform uh, on YouTube, and it, it was for like a summit or something completely different where Joel Embiid was, was just talking, and, and they asked him a question about the Sixers, the vision, all that, and here is what he had to say. We look forward to Joel Embiid. Um, I just want to win a championship. Um, 
you know, whatever it takes. I don't know where that's going to be, whether it's in Philly or, you know, anywhere else. You know, I just want to have a chance uh, to accomplish that. I want to see what it feels like to win that first one and then and they provide, you know, the next one. Um, you know, it's not easy. Um, but, you know, it takes more than, you know, one, you know, two, three hours. Well, so Joel Embiid says that he wants to win a championship, whatever it takes, and that he doesn't know where it's going to be, whether it's Philadelphia or another place. This is the first time Joel Embiid publicly said that, you know, it could be somewhere else, right? He's always been on the on the edge and, and on the backing of the Sixers, right? No matter how much chaos has ensued, it's always, I want to win in Philly, I want to stay in Philly. People went crazy over this, and myself included. Uh, we we're, you know, kind of confused for a little bit, but a couple hours later, Joel Embiid, uh, oh yeah. And, and he even led NBA central to repost this from bet online, AG, where they were actually putting odds for where Joel Embiid would actually land, uh, if he was to be traded, the Knicks being number one Nets Mavericks, but then Joel Embiid came out and he said he was trolling. He says, I've lost my place as the best troll here though. And it went to Daryl Morey. So Sixer fans, take a deep breath, relax, put your feet up, maybe chuckle a little bit. Joel Embiid, as you can see by his Twitter name, is Joel Troel Embiid. Maybe the Troel is back. He's been matured the last couple of years. Who knows what's going on? I, I don't know anymore. Um, even somebody had replied to him on Twitter and said, I'd like to win a championship in Philly or somewhere else. That was unnecessary. And he says, buddy, check my middle name. The Troel is here. Joel's having fun with it. and. Going even further, you, you want an even better troll job, right? Joel was talking about Daryl Morey and, and trolling and who has the best spot. Here's Daryl Morey on a reply to Michael Levin about signing centers because now they have five centers on the roster. And Daryl Morey says they are all graduates of the center center for centers and puts this meme. Why are you so obsessed with centers? Daryl, you might want to put your phone on do not disturb after this one. You might want to put your phone on, on silent. No, not even vibrate. Like, get rid of your phone because Sixer fans are blowing him up. He's openly trolling. I, I can't figure out if it's like the trolling where Daryl already has a master plan drawn up and he's just being like cocky and funny with it, or if he's essentially just trolling because he doesn't care. Like, which one is it? Right? We had the whole crumble cookies thing, and you don't get this with a lot of teams, a lot of ownership. Daryl, you better have a plan up your sleeve, man, because if not, this is going to look really embarrassing. The center, center for centers. He's openly trolling the Sixer fan base because we have five centers on the team. This is crazy. This is to the GM of the team on Twitter. You got to get the act together, man. I've been a big backer, big supporter of Maury. You got to make something happen. I hope he is. It's only July 17th. We got a couple months till camp, but come on now. Come on now, you have Joel Embiid, Daryl Morey trolling. My problem with the Embiid thing uh, is not what he said, because again, you know, I know he wants to win a chip, and I'm glad to see him express that desire. But at the same time, man, you know, a lot of that's on you, Joel. This was the first offseason, or the first postseason, the first playoffs, where a lot of it's reflecting back on you. There's been other times where, you know, you haven't played the best in the playoffs. You've been injured almost every year. But it, it, you weren't the main culprit, right? It was somebody else for the most part. But, Joel, this was on you a lot, man. You were healthy enough to go out there and play. And in Game 6, the whole team folded in the final minutes. And then in Game 7, you went out there. And honestly, it looked like you did not try. You looked absolutely miserable. And that's my problem with this, right? We've seen over the last five years, you know, Giannis had all the spotlight on him. He went out, became an MVP, won a championship. We saw Jokic get criticized for different things. He elevated his game to another level. Joel's out here laughing around trolling, and even after Game 7, he didn't seem like he you know, was too affected by it. Joe, you better come back in the best shape of your life. You have to stay healthy because I said this right after the season. Joel Embiid's value right now is the highest it'll ever be. Do I want to trade Joel Embiid? No. But if we're looking towards the future, right, the only asset on this team that they're trading that's getting value back is Joel Embiid. If he goes another year and gets hurt, though, you can say bye-bye to that. All that just gets flushed down the toilet, and you know then you're really stuck. So, Joel, you have to stay healthy come playoff time. If you want to bring back the Tro Troel side, fine, but you got to be serious here, man. This is very crucial. Sixer fans are, are very on edge. They are ticked off 
by the way that this team came out and looked in Game 7. They're ticked off by the fact that they continue to lose in the second round. And, you know, you got to you gotta be strong. You got to be mature, man. You got to step up your game. And you have to put some accountability on yourself. You have to be the leader of this team. And, you know, when, it, when push comes to shove, you got to grow up and, and be that guy for this team, right? You have to play better in the playoffs. You need to take that next leap. I do think the spotlight is very good. On Joel Embiid, I'm glad that there's all this pressure and spotlight on him because I do think that'll help him take it to the next level. But, you know, you're running low on chances here. You got to make it happen. With that being said, if the Sixers traded Joel, yeah, they're going to take a huge step back. I don't think people realize that sometimes. Like, people just have a vendetta out on Joel sometimes. Like, he's still one of the greatest players in the league. Here we are covering the drama every single day. We'll see how it all plays out. What do you think is next? Give me your thoughts down below in the comment section as always appreciate everybody for tuning in be sure to like comment and subscribe and with that being said i will catch you all on the next one peace